this video, we are exploring how to create a task dependency system within Coda, as well as block tasks from being completed based on their dependencies and update the dates of tasks in bulk whenever there is an update and automatically. So these are the key features that we're going to look at in this video today. And we're going to break this down into four main steps. First, we're going to look at the table structure of this task database that I created. And I'm going to explain to you what each column does and the purpose of it. Second, we're going to explore the done button right here that you can see is only clickable on some rows, but not others. So we will understand why. Hint, that is because if there is a task that has a parent task like this one, and the parent task is not complete yet, then you can't click this button. Third, we're going to look at the task timeline right here, where you can go through different scopes of view of your tasks based on the dates that you set up right here. And you can open each task as well as a page, as per usual. And finally, we're going to look at how we can make these things automatic. And this is powered by Coda's native automations right here from this settings menu. So let's get started with the first task that we have on the list, and that is looking at the task dependency table structure. So right here, I created this table in Coda using the slash command table. And you can see that the first column is a task name, that's the page by default. Next up, there is a row number. That is a formula. So the row number is automatically generated and it is incremental based on the position of the row within the table. And so if you look at the formula here, it says this table dot find this row. So it's pretty straightforward. It looks at this table, that is the task dependency table. Now you want to find this row, the current row where we are calculating this formula. And this way we get the row number within the table. Next up, we have a start date and an end date as well. So right here, we can set up the start date and we can pick it from the date selector. Then we have blocked by and blocking. And these are lookup columns. So right here, you can see this is the column type is lookup right here. And we are looking up within the same table. So it's a self-referential lookup. We are looking up within task dependency because we want to create that parent-child relation within this table. And here in the blocked by column, you choose the parent task. And that's where you can pick manually, right? right here. Whereas the blocking lookup column is a formula. So you can't change it manually. As you can see, I can't click on it because there is a formula. And so if I open the formula, so that's still a lookup column. But when I open the formula, you can see the syntax right here. That is lookup this table, this table dot parent row, and this row dot row number. So that means we want to look up, you see the syntax of lookup is table, then the column to look up, and then the value to match. So the first thing that we are doing here is we are looking up this table that is the task dependency table right here. We are looking up the column that is called parent row, and that's a column that I created and that is hidden right now, but I can show easily by going here, and then I can go columns, and you can see there is this column here that is parent row. And if we look at this column, you can see that this is a formula that says blocked by dot row number. So we are rolling up the value of the blocked by column for each row, and we are looking up the row number so that we can have that match in our formula. And so if you go back to our blocking formula here, we are looking up this table, the parent row row value right here. And we want to match it with the row number that is this number here and that means as you can see here in this example we have blocked by that is understand market characteristics that is the first row we know that the row number here is one and that's what we reference in this parent row column and so thanks to this we can calculate this formula where we find the matched value that is one in this case within the table and then outputs the correct blocking value to display. So whatever blocked by you choose, and your choice is going to be reflected in the blocking column. And that is essentially the setup of the table right here. Now, another important property that you can find here is done. So this column is a button. So the column type is button. And then when you go to button options, you can see that the label is done. 
And the action they want to take is modify rows because you want to modify the row to make sure that the task dependency table, this row where we are clicking this button, marks the task as completed. And we have a checkbox essentially in the back end that is checked off only when you click this button. If you don't click this button, it's not checked off and you can't click this button if the parent task is not complete yet, which makes sense when you have a solid task dependency system. And here we are saying that we want to disable this button and that's a very important feature in this system. We want to disable this button if block by dot completed equals false. That is, if the parent task is not completed yet, then we need to disable this button. So the user can't click on this button right here. So we have looked at the dependency table structure and the simple columns that we have here. We have also analyzed the button setup right here that we can click to mark a task as complete. Now we can look at the tasks timeline. The task timeline right here can be created by using the slash command. And then you can type timeline and you can see that display timeline. That is the command that you want to use. And when you choose that command, you will have the options panel right here that will show you the timeline display where you can choose the width of the timeline. You can choose the start date, the end date, the person property to display. And here, that's an important feature. You want to choose what's the dependency column to use. In this case, I choose blocked by because that's the parent task that you want to look visually from the timeline itself. And in here, you can see that I also added a conditional format that says if completed is checked, then make the entire row within the timeline green, just as a visual indicator that can be useful for users. So this is the timeline, and you can see that within the timeline, you can define your scope of view, such as quarter here, and then you can find dependencies and visually see them through this arrow. In here, you can also hide that column. The final key feature of this task dependency system is that you can update dates automatically. That is, we have automation rules running in the background that ensure that you can update the dates automatically whenever the parent task date is changed. In particular, if you look at the settings panel here, we have automations. When we open automations, we have two rules currently active. The first one is called when end date edited. This rule looks at every change in this task dependency table. And whenever there is a change in the end date, this automation will fire. So in here, if we look at the structure of the automation, first we have when, that is the trigger of the automation. And we say when row changed within the table task dependency. And the column that we want to look at is the end date, this column right here. Then here we have no condition because when that changes, we want to fire this automation every time without any conditions. Then that is the action. So whenever there is a change in the end date right here, then modify rows within the table task dependency. And we want to only modify the rows where blocked by equals step one result. So we want to look up the blocked by that is the parent task that is the same as the modified end date. Because if we modify the end date of this parent task here, and we want to ensure that this task that is dependent on this one is also updated accordingly. And what we want to update is the start date value. That is this column right here. And the start date is going to be taken from the end date, the new end date of the updated row. So right here we have step one result dot end date. So to test out this rule, let's go and update the value of this task right here. So we have understand market characteristics. That's the first task within our system that we need to complete between the 2nd of January and the 5th of January. But let's say that we have gone over time and we need to change the end date. But we realize down the road that that is too early. So we're going to come here and do the 10th, for example, right there. Now you see that within this system, we have this task that is dependent on this task right here. And the start date right now is the 5th of January for this task. But we know that now the end date of understand market characteristics is the 10th of January. So we want to ensure that the start date in here 
is populated automatically based on the updated value in here because we can't start this task unless this one is completed. We can't define our core business model unless we understand the market characteristics. After a few seconds, you will see the start date value automatically updated. And that is it. And so if you go to the automation panel again, we go when end date edited, and you can also see the history of activities right here. And you will see that here is the latest automation run. And that is the first automation that we have in the background. The second automation starts whenever the blocked by column is edited. So we are talking about this column right here. And that's because we want to make it easy for users. Whenever I add a new task, let's say this is a test two, there's no start date, but I know that the blocked by task, so the parent task for this subtask is, let's say, device core strategy for the next five years. And we know that this task has the end date being the 2nd of February. So right here, you can see that the start date of this new task was automatically updated via automation. And so the rule of the automation is the following. So first, there is a trigger that is very similar to the previous one that we saw. That is, whenever there is a row changed, in particular, a row within the task dependency table, and the column that we want to look at is the blocked by. So whenever this column right here is edited and this column is not blank, because sometimes you might also delete a blocked by task. So in that case, the automation will not continue. But if you added a blocked by parent task, then the automation will continue and it will run this action that is push buttons within the task dependency table. So to understand this action here, we need to look at what we have in the back end of this table, so to speak. And that is a button that you can find here for this test. That's a button. And when I click on this button, you can see that the action to take is modify rows within the task dependency table. We want to apply it to this row. That is, whenever you push the button, that's going to apply to only that row as opposed to the entire table. And the value that you want to update is the start date. In particular, you want to take this row dot end date blocked by. That is a lookup value where we have a column within the task dependency table that takes the end date of the blocked by value of the parent task. And so through this button, we update the start date by looking up the end date of the parent task. The automation simply pushes this button for you so that you don't have to push it. And that's why this button can be hidden in the overall user interface so that users don't need to understand how to use it. And you can also hide the button in your layout right here. When you open a page, you have edit layout and you can come here and you can definitely hide that button here that is already hidden. As you can see here from this hidden section. And if you want to edit even more, you can hide the hidden column links so that users are not going to know about that button even. So that it becomes a sort of app building exercise here where you can pick exactly what to show and what to hide for users. And that concludes the overall functioning of the system. Those two automations together with the tasks timeline right here and the done button that you can push just like that. And you can see that now it is activated right here. And the task dependency table structure we saw in the very beginning, that is how you create task dependencies in Coda and make it a pretty solid system that truly is almost on par to a proper task management system. And you can go even more in that. But for this video and for the sake of this tutorial, those are the key features that we looked at. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to interact in the comments section. Thank you for watching and see you soon.